also a customer experience product manager with Cisco U, and my boss, Ashley Roach, director of product for Cisco U. So please, everybody behave well and make me look good. Um, we're here to talk to you today about Cisco U. If you've not noticed signage throughout the show, uh, we're going to get you clarified on what the heck this thing is that we built. Um, so here's a quick agenda. We're going to do intros. I just did that. Look at that. Already ahead of the game. I'm going to do a quick Cisco U demo. Um, I am going to kind of keep it high level. If you guys want to learn more about what Cisco U is, the website is u.cisco.com, right? Yeah. Okay. We're on that. Good. Uh, if you want, uh, there is also a demo station. You can all check that out afterwards if you want to go take a look. This is our panel. This is what we're going to be uh, discussing in front of you today. I have a few questions teed up. We're going to talk through those. And then when we get through them, we'll have a Q&A. If any of you have any questions you feel like we didn't answer or you need clarification on, we will answer them at the end. And then how can you as a learner, as a user, get involved in Cisco U? And then we will conclude. All right, so let me just kind of walk you guys through. Like I said, we are going to do a brief, very high level look. So this is the landing page. Again, if you didn't catch that web address, it's up there, u.cisco.com. Um, but I'm going to kind of walk you through the um, nice, clean, fancy stuff of uh, our marketing pages because that's easier than just drilling down several levels uh, while we're talking here. So Cisco U is tech learning shaped to you. Uh, we built Cisco U with the preposition that we wanted to really deliver three main things to our learners, depth of content, personalized recommendations, and a sense of community. So community learning, the ability to learn and teach others has been shown to be a really great reinforcer for educational opportunities, especially when you're learning tricky concepts like some of the content we have on Cisco uh, certification trainings. Um, and you can see here, we kind of, these are the three that I talked about. Community support. Those of you who are not involved in Cisco Learning Network, I highly recommend it. It is a free resource we have. There are over a million users, literally, on the Cisco Learning Network. Um, and we've decided to bring them into the Cisco U experience. So you'll see opportunities within Cisco U to engage. Uh, let's say you want to get your CCNA certification. There is a CCNA actual community that you can view discussions, threads, resources, uh, learn any kind of material content recommendations from your peers within the community. Um, so you see that and then in-depth multi-vendor training. We do have things like Microsoft, AWS, Skillsoft available on Cisco U. Uh, we have decided to bring in uh, third-party vendors who are also in this tech learning space, acknowledging that we are not the only game out there and people want to be able to access uh, learning content from a myriad of different providers. And then, you know, this is, we live in a day and age when you want, you can access learning content anytime you want. And previously our content had been very modularized where you would get into uh, what's not modularized, where you would get into some content and it would just be a wall of content. And maybe you only had an hour to commit to learning that content. We've broken out our content and segments so that you understand, hey, this portion of this uh, learning path is going to take X amount of minutes. Okay, I've got an hour here. I'm going to go ahead and start on that. So we're trying to build it uh, a product for you that allows you to consume the content at your own pace. Um, and then I'm going to show you the catalog really briefly. Those of you who are curious about pricing, we do have a freemium platform level. Um, you can start that for free at any time you want. We do have discounted pricing for essentials and all access, and that pricing goes through the end of July. Um, if you want more information on how that works with CLCs or any of that stuff, we can answer those questions either in the Q&A section or if you want to grab us afterwards, we can talk through it at length with you and would be happy to do so. Um, and then I think we're all the way at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the catalog really briefly. So with the content that we wanted to pour into Cisco U, we wanted to acknowledge that people learn in different ways. Um, and so you'll see content in here. Let me just pour over into it for you. Um, that should kind of hit you from a different, a couple of different angles. So we have podcasts, we have videos, we have blogs. Um, oh, actually, I'll just log in and you can kind of get the full extent. I apologize. I thought this carried me over. Do, do, do. I may still be even logged in. I am. Hooray. So here, I'll show you the Explore page. So you can see here, we've got 
learning paths with within a learning path you can see here it is a large amount of content it is the most comprehensive content that we have on the site we have labs assessments courses and then you can see the levels and expectations of what the objectives are for each of these learning paths we have courses we have webinar events now um so starting kind of here forward you're going to see a lot of the free content being surfaced so here's the upcoming events the podcasts our videos, our tutorials, which are very popular right now. And we will continue to pour more and more content into Cisco U as time progresses. And Huma's been really at the forefront of bringing the content into Cisco U. So she can really talk a great deal of in-depth uh, there about that topic area. Now that we can just talk a little bit about what's now next later for Cisco U as we continue to build it. And I'm going to go over to my fancy PowerPoint. All right, panel question one to my coworkers. I'll allow you guys to go first. So as a product team member, what gets you fired up about Cisco U? Uh, what has to this point really made this a passion project? And now we get to launch it and make it real. So whom I'm going to let you go ahead and go first. Thank you, Kate. Um, this is a great question, um, mostly because Cisco U for me is not just a job, it's also a passion. Um, I love working on this product. I love the vision, which is to help you grow in your careers, to help you with your learning needs and help build that community who is always looking forward to, you know, upscale and rescale and stay relevant to the to the changing job market. Um, that's the that's the one thing that really gets me fired up about Cisco U. And um, I get to meet a lot of people who are using our content uh, and they are real life stories. You know, uh, people get certified and then that helped them either grow in their careers or it helped them transition or find their passion. So I think that's the most important thing for me that makes Cisco U um, such a passion project. Excellent. Ashley? Sure. Hello, everyone. Uh, so one of the one of the um, things that fires me up is actually Kate and Huma, uh, who are really passionate about what the 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 vision and the capabilities of the product are and what it can be, um, and really how we're trying to be very customer focused and and user focused uh, for delivering the content for delivering the product in a way that. On one hand, we'll deliver it incrementally, but on the other hand, we want to go deep into understanding, like, why do you really need X feature or why do you really need, um, you know, Z feature? So that's from a product standpoint, get what gets me excited. Do you want us to talk about any of the features that we think are awesome or is that a future question? No, we can go ahead. We can kind of diverge if okay. you want to go ahead and talk about it. I don't really think my other questions asked with specificity for features. Okay. So go for it. So I think one the one of the features that I'm really excited about uh, in the in the product is the for you page. And uh, I know that we breezed over that and looked mm -hmm. at the explore page. I can pull it up. But the cool thing with for you is it's a lot like, you know, we've sort of borrowed from a lot of AI based systems that when they present the initial experience to you, it's like, what are what are the things you're looking for? And then how do we personalize that experience back to you? And so we, we present a survey that allows you to answer a few questions mm -hmm. that then informs the recommendations that come back on the For You page. Um, and this is going to get better over time, but this was kind of our initial take on it. And so look forward to getting any feedback from any of you who've used it. We have a nice feedback button over there. So yes. if you um, use it and you're like, hey, I want X, Y, Z capability, by all means, put it in there. We'd love to follow up with you and even talk with you and so on. So that's a that's an exciting part of the experience that we've been building for a little while now. Yeah. Huma, what about you? Right. Um, there are so many features to choose from. Um, my favorite feature is the pre-assessment. If you have looked at the learning learning bats, um, so instead of going through the whole list of courses and and then figure out if you already knew the content or not, there's a quick way for you to take a pre-assessment, which is a quick knowledge check, um, 
It is not tied to your completion of the you know learning path, but it gives you that information and that knowledge, like where the knowledge gaps are, which courses you should be taking and which courses you already know. So maybe you can skip them and you get to see the visual uh, indicators that highlight which courses you already know. So, you know, we sometimes we we already know stuff and, and that's a great way to save save your time. That's one of my favorite features on on Cisco U. And the second one, um, I, I I think the personalization and the onboarding survey and how it really sets you to uh, you know what you're re really looking for. So you can you can mention that um, at the beginning. And if you if over time you know your preferences change, you can always go back and reset your preferences, uh, and that will change the recommendations and how your personalization evolves with that. Excellent. Excellent. Um, I will say for me, what, what, what really fires me up about Cisco U, I have been a lifelong educator and I made a career pivot just a couple of years ago. And it's really easy when you're in those moments to feel completely overwhelmed by all the data and the info and the platforms and where do I go and what do I do? And I only have so much time. And so building something that was more, um, user friendly and more personalized. Again, we're going to, you're going to hear that word a lot, but it's true, um, was essential. Um, I would say the feature for me uh, that I really am excited about is the community. Um, we have started pulling community in from um, CLM. Like I said, it's a community of over a million people. Um, it's a wonderful resource that to this point, we probably have under leveraged and we're really going to lean into leveraging it more. Um, but as you, as you scroll through these, you can see these are very active communities. And I have found for me when I have struggled with concepts, um, nothing has helped me more than to raise my hand and ask for help. And then to reinforce that nothing has helped me more than to say, oh, I know how to answer that question. Let me answer your question for you. Um, so for me, that's the feature I am most excited about. But really, we're pumped about all of it. So we're big old Cisco, you nerds up here. All right. Um, learning trends. There's a lot of stuff going on out there. What kind of ways are we as product managers trying to stay attuned to evolution in the field and how can we how can we kind of plan for that in the future i'll let either one of you answer sure i'll uh, i'll take that one yep uh so we talked about the modularity of the content um i think this starts getting into sort of education nerd world i suppose but the concept of like micro learning or the ability for you to quickly grasp information in like two minute segments or short things you you may not realize it but this is roughly how people use youtube in a lot of cases where you know hey i want to change a light bulb <laughs> for me i wanted to replace uh this tub spigot so my kids were like the it was spurting out the bottom you know and all that so i go to youtube and i search up and i can get a video that's like here is the 30 second segment of how to replace the, you know, the, the nozzle. Now we haven't gone that far yet, but from a trend standpoint, a vision standpoint, uh, we've definitely explored with some of those kinds of concepts. Um, so in general, that's, that's something that's really exciting. And I think there's also going back to that, um, the P word personalization, some, ideas that we're exploring around, okay, how do we enable a user to really customize their experience themselves and, and pick and choose from the learning that we have? Um, so again, not something that we've really got in, in motion right now, but that's another trend of just being able to have that individualized experience of learning for yourself. Fair enough. Huma? Huma. All right. Learning as we, you know, as we see um, see it right now, it's not like a monolith anymore. People learn for different motivations and they learn through different types, you know, that um, you may prefer a video over reading text or you may prefer listening um, to a podcast or attending event or community is the most important thing for you. So all of these things especially within Cisco U, we kept all of that in mind that you may have different preferences, you may have different needs, you may have different time availability. 
uh, and that's this platform, Cisco U, should be able to respond to that changing need of your personalized preferences. And also, people are learning from different uh, different sources, different vendors. Uh, they want to learn about technologies, maybe not just from, from Cisco. They want to learn it from, from Microsoft, from AWS, from Skillsoft. And that's that's really great thing about Cisco U that we don't want you to go and find out what else is adjacent to what we are uh, offering you. So all of that is available in Cisco U. So you can just open one platform and it fulfills all your needs, um, your changing needs. So it it grows with you and you grow with Cisco U. Um, that that's that's how I think we are we are working on the you know the changing trends, um, and it also. In the future, there's an aspiration to address. You may, might want to change a career, or you might want to transition into in a different career. And Cisco, you should be able to hold you, you know, through your journey, um, no matter what your learning needs are. Oh, excellent, excellent. I would say um, one of the things that I think is important that has emerged in the last few years is the acknowledgement that all learners have different needs. Um, we have a neurodiverse world that we live in now, so we need to acknowledge those needs need to be met, as well as the fact that how we are individually motivated to continue learning what can be very difficult subject matter is incredibly personalized. So how do we stay motivated? How do we build a platform that isn't like a nag, like, hey, get in there and learn. You know, we want to motivate you organically. We want you to want to learn. And it, when I've taught, it's always easier to teach a learner who wants to be there versus a learner that doesn't. So how do we find ways to reach you and acknowledge that what you want and, and how you can be motivated to obtain your educational needs uh, is incredibly personal. So how do we build something that is um, malleable so that all of our learners feel like they're being addressed and acknowledged. All right, last question, big question. What's now next later for Cisco U? Fully acknowledging that some of this is blue sky talk here, but what are some things that we are envisioning that we are really pumped about or that we know are coming that we've already heard people want? Either of you? Okay, I'll start. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So going, so this is a little bit of a dangerous question, yes. right? Because we can be like, well, we're going to build all these things and you will come back next year and you'll be like, well, where's all that stuff that you built <laughs> <laughs> or you said you were going to build? Um, so I want to preface this a little bit with the philosophy of how we're trying to build Cisco U and our general approach, I think, within learning and certifications, which is um, an incremental approach. And, you know, for those of you who live in a software development world um, or even experience this, companies these days deploy software regularly through like cloud technologies and so on. So, you know, and you're, as you're going through Cisco Live, you're probably going to hear about that kind of um, desire for enterprises to be able to deploy uh, their solutions incrementally. And so the reason for that is it reduces risk, right? So that we can deploy something that maybe took a month to build that is directionally in the way we wanna go, um, but not waiting a year to then deliver the thing and then finding out when we do ship it, oh, customers didn't actually want that. Um, so it's a risk mitigation strategy, but it's also a way for us to get new improvements into your hands as quickly as possible. Um, so that's sort of the preface and some of the philosophy of what we're doing. And we've been talking a lot about um, something recently that is think big, act small. Um, so that can extend even into personal life or, you know, habit formation, all those kinds of things. But how we approach a roadmap is very much in that way. So we want to think big, but we need to do it in a small way every day, every week, every release. Um, so... That's kind of the philosophy side. Maybe I'll let Huma answer perhaps what her think big and think small ideas are at the moment. I would love to share that. Um, we are, since we you have already heard the philosophy, uh, which you know very nicely tie into to what we are working on next. So one of the great things about Cisco U that we are 
we are always listening to the feedback. There is a constant feedback through that feedback feature that Kate shared earlier. So there was feedback, there is feedback, more feedback coming. And we found out that a lot of our learners community is really interested in having continued education or C credit support in Cisco U that adds a lot of value for their recertification journeys. So that is next. Um, also, since certifications and recertification, that whole journey requires for somebody to really find out what they want to get certified for, what's the level, what's the prereq, what kind of content do I need, and how do I take it from, and how do I prep for an exam, and then take a certification, and even after certification, how do I retain that certification and go next? So we are actively working on um, the certi certification journey in Cisco U that will offer an end-to-end -end experience, but in an iterative way. There is no single shot to this feature or experience. We we are currently, you know, uh, working with. Um, we're listening to our customers and our users, and uh, really interested in finding out how would they expect this certification journey to work for them. So this is our next and uh, maybe Ashley can highlight something, you know, that is like more future looking for later. Sure. Um, Kate, did you want to add anything? No, or? I want to I know actually. Let's talk <laughs> about it. <laughs> I think one of, the, one of the obvious things that we've heard that we haven't done yet is around like mobile experience. So today we have um, a responsive design, it's web-based, um, but what we've heard from some of the research we've done previous to this event, but also we even heard it uh, from the CCIE advisory group, which is, hey, I wanna be able to take your learning, I wanna put it offline on my mobile device, and I just wanna listen to it in the background when I'm driving. And maybe that's some experience like with podcasts, but there are potentially other ideas that we can do so that that passive learning experience can be a lot easier for you to do. Um, I have a personal experience with this uh, through a friend who actually recently did a CCNA. And she, she spent about a year um, on that journey. And her, she was coming from being like, I think she was a beer distributor and she wanted to break into IT and she started with like a security plus. She got that and then got to know me through a friend. And conveniently, I worked in learning and certification. So I was like, oh, cool, let me hook you up. I'll help you kind of get, a, get an idea of how to get started and so on. So we would meet every month or every quarter to try to, I wanted to know feedback on the platform and I wanted to hear about her experience. And she was telling me about, <laughs> I thought it was ridiculous, honestly, at the time, but she was telling me about how she's, she went and found every podcast she could ever find related to CCNA. She went and got all the YouTube videos, and she's any downtime she had, she spent really just absorbing that material. And so when we got to the research, our own research, and people were, we, we interviewed them, and we got that feedback around, hey, I want to do the same thing. I was like, cool, that's a really cool validation of, what this one person was doing that more and more people want to be able to do. So um, so that's something that we've heard immediately recently. Um, and, you know, hopefully we're able to do that, right? We've got a lot of other pieces that we have to prioritize as well. Um, so so that's, that's definitely one. Nice, nice. I think for me, um, probably more in the later, but always in the iterative approach, um, like we've been talking about personalization is so essential to Cisco U, but personalization is very much a double-edged sword because that acknowledges that we cannot build a one size fits all solution for everybody because at some point we will not be personalizing it to what you want. So in my mind, one thing that I'm really interested in uh, kind of addressing more and more over time is how do we continue to personalize the experience for you, but then also begin to put the learner in the driver's seat of, hey, I like the dashboard that you guys have, but I don't like how it's configured. I want to be able to configure my dashboard in a way that motivates me or that I find interesting or even relevant. Um, so that to me is something that over time we're going to continue to work on. Um, we already have been 
working incrementally on it, but it can continue to grow and evolve over time. Um, I think we are almost at time, but I do want to acknowledge, does anyone have any questions for, oh, we do have a question. Do you have a question, sir? Oh, he was just raising his hand. Just, do you have a question? Yeah. Go ahead, ma'am. Okay. You want to you wanna ask on the mic? Sorry. Thanks, Ashley. Um, hi, I'm Erin. I'm from a university in Australia and we are a um, networking academy, Cisco Networking Academy. How do we combine Netacad with Cisco U and, and from a learner's experience as well? How does that become seamless? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. Ashley, you want to answer that one? Sure. Yeah, great question. Uh, so Net Academy, we're, we're close partners with, in fact, um, I'm not sure if you heard recently, but we introduced a partnership with them in, in, for even um, uh, a more entry-level certification, um, forgetting the name of it. Uh, I think we announced it like two months ago. And so what we want to see is that progression from Network Academy, from university, through to, okay, I've got the basic skills, now I'm going to move into CCNA and so on. Um, so we're, our VP PAR meets with their VP like very regularly so that we do coordinate and we, we want to make that journey more seamless. Um, one thing that we do recognize is that there's a lot of learning spread out all over Cisco. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, so Cisco U is a place where we're going to try to bring more together, but um, we're, we don't have like uh, the the full authority to just go and say like, you have to be in Cisco U, right? So we're working though with our partners and everybody at Cisco realizes, okay, we wanna make this experience a lot easier for the learner, for an individual, for a partner, for a channel partner and so on. Um, so it takes time, it's a big company, uh, a lot of people to have to work with, but yeah, complimentary right now, think of it as like skills for all flows into Cisco U, um, and maybe we splinter a little bit into specializations like around WebEx or something like that. But some of that content may eventually come into Cisco U as well. So, yeah, thanks. Good question. Good Appreciate question. it. Anyone else? Oh, oh, we got a bunch of questions. Love it. You warmed them up. I did. Yeah, thank <laughs> there you. There you go, sir. I a question about uh, exportability of some of this stuff. I don't know if you're, I don't know if you're familiar with CAS or Experience API or uh, basically in our organization skills inventory uh it's it's nice to have know who passed or failed a ccna but or but if if it's something more granular like an actual extensible thing maybe uh for discrete reusable objects uh, of of information for for ksas and management for like an organization so even if they failed or i know that this guy's good at this specific specific thing and is there a way to that you guys categorize or taxonomize your information that way that is exportable for like like ESCO? Think of you know European skills yeah. organization and stuff like that. Um, there's a long answer there, and there's a short answer. The short answer is uh, definitely interested in being able to provide that kind of, especially like an XAPI feed. Um, but I would love to maybe we can talk later um, and have my team. We can interview you later, like because. Yeah. We're working uh, also to um, engage with our enterprise customers, our learning partners, um, and channel partners to understand the requirements that they would like to see. Um, and so I definitely think sort of an API approach is a fantastic way to do that. Um, we will also probably have things like canned reports and stuff like those things, but uh, we, wanna, we wanna build something that's scalable across all of our customer segments. And so I'd be curious to just learn more from you on that. Yeah, thanks. Anyone else have questions? You do, sir? Here you go. I had a similar question about sort of a, uh, a team function so that multiple learners are part of a team. You can track mm. how much content you know they've watched and mm -hmm. so on. Yeah, that, that's actually something we're working on actively right now. Yeah. yeah. Love it. It's great. Thanks for the validation. <laughs> Whoop, question. Love it. Yeah. Just a, a question on CE points. Uh, so I have an account on 
Cisco um, Platinum Learning Library. I continue to use that until it expires and then port over to Cisco U for that. Is that yeah, so we absolutely, so we didn't do a huge data migration because the course material that's in CDL um, have these, these monolithic courses, the way we talk about it, and then we split them up. And so like progress doesn't really map effectively across all of those different sub kind of modules. Um, but what we do want to do is expose like completion data so that at least you know like, hey, I've got this completion data on my learning dashboard. Um, and um, we do encourage people though to just essentially finish the certification work you're doing on CDL and then start the new on the new platform. Does anyone else have questions? Okay. Oh, they shut us off. Oh, no, they didn't. So we're all around at yes. the, there's a Cisco U booth on the other side of that. We'll um, be happy to thing. chat further. We also have this rev up for research um, area, which is, I think we're supposed to talk about. We are. It's one um, of the two. But yep. we're, we're kind of between those two spots, I think. I'm not sure exactly, but yeah, we'll be around. We'll be so around. We'd love Absolutely. to talk more. Absolutely. Yeah. And before you all go, there is a raffle. First of all, thank you. Great questions. We appreciate it. There is a raffle. We're doing it um, Oprah Winfrey style. Um, so it's under your seat. If you have a raffle ticket and if you don't, if nobody has it, then check other seats around you. It's okay if you didn't technically, if, if, you're, if your butt didn't meet the seat, there's no like qualifiers here. Do, do, 